my God. I never had this fantasy of Prince Charming coming in. Love you. <laughs> Men aren't Prince Charming and women are not Cinderella. None of us are. He was the closest thing we ever could imagine to Prince Charming. Paolo came into Benita's life and he was gorgeous, had an amazing career, spent money on her. This is our cave of love <laughs> with so many roses, petals on the floor. And the most beautiful woman. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. It was a constant shower of flowers and gifts. He would leave notes and lipstick on my bathroom mirror. He gave me a lot of really beautiful jewelry. He seemed to have unlimited money. To drop 10000 on something was nothing for him. He would spend money like you would not even believe. The food, the roses on the bed shaped like a heart. And then there were the trips, long weekends around the world. So we are here at the uh, Athens airport. We went to London, we went to Mexico, Russia, Sweden, Puerto Rico, the Bahamas twice, Greece. I love you, my love. You. Her life suddenly went from very down to earth to this kind of glamorous, almost celebrity lifestyle that I was like, what is happening to Benita? <laughs> Paolo kind of gives you that George Clooney type of feel, that salt, pepper, gray, sexy kind of guy. He spoke, what, six seven lang languages? Seven languages. He reminds me of that beer commercial, the one with the most interesting man in the world. He is the most interesting man in the world. You know, meeting for the first time, frankly, was a bit intimidated. I yeah. thought, here's this extremely well-educated person, a world-renowned surgeon. What am I going to say to this guy? And he was just incredibly down to earth. You know, it was really easy to talk to him. He would record these little video love messages to me. Just wanted to send you a few loving uh, good morning words and a lot of kisses to my princess. I mean, he was even concerned about her friends. I had breast cancer, and he called me about, you know, what to do with my surgeries. Benita had a sparkle in her eye. She was blushing a lot. She had finally met the person that she was supposed to be with. I cannot stop thinking at you, and especially proud that you are mine. I love you so very much. This is not somebody who's just telling her he loved her. He was doing it with actions. When I first met Paolo, um, the one thing he didn't do was dance, and I love to dance. But then he surprised me. We were in this little bar in Mexico, and all of a sudden salsa music comes on. And he takes my hand and he said, will you dance with me? And I said, excuse me? He had been taking private salsa lessons in Russia, he said, for months, to, just to learn how to salsa dance with me. Benita had a strong support system, friends and family members who would look after her daughter when she spent time with Paolo. I was very hesitant to introduce Paolo to my daughter. I wanted to be absolutely sure that this was someone that I wanted to keep in my life. She thought he was amazing. Wooing her was as important to him as wooing me. With these two beautiful girls. We were his princesses. It was like living a fairy tale. He took us to the Bahamas. Wow! And he was amazing with her. Oh, we had a ballet. It was the first time since her dad died I had seen her seem happy. And I distinctly remember thinking, if anyone is going to step in to try and fill her dad's shoes, he's a great guy to do that. This was our first Christmas together. I love Christmas. I know, but I remember. You know, he hands me a gift. I didn't think anything of it. Oh, my 
I opened this gift and it's a ring. And I looked at him like, is this what I think it is? And he's like, yeah. I actually couldn't talk for a while. It was a gorgeous ring and I was so stunned. That's how he proposed. It was, it was sweet. And that ring, he slipped and admitted that he had spent $100,000 on it. But they still had a lot to work out, like Paolo's divorce. They had to figure out where to live. How would they balance their careers? I wanted him to stick around for New Year's, and he said he couldn't. He said, I have a really important surgery. I have some really high-powered clients, like dignitaries and world leaders and uh, what? That's when he told me that there was this kind of clandestine network who are on call, basically, for these people. He told me that it included the Clintons and that he and Bill were tight, that they were good friends, and that they played tennis together. He adds the Obamas to this mix. There's only one way to solve these challenges. As part of this VIP network, he had become one of Pope Francis's private consulting doctors. It sounds crazy, I know, but if anybody sort of fit that bill, Paulo fit that bill. Somebody has to do that job, so why not him? As much time as he spent in New York, it still was a long-distance relationship. He was holding positions in London, uh, Russia, Sweden. Lots of hospitals are inviting him in to say, look, we've got a patient here who's had their windpipe damaged. So he's this kind of star expert that people bring in. He often had to cancel things at the last minute because he had an emergency surgery. He was gone for, you know, either a few days or a week, and my sister might not be able to get a hold of him because he's saying, hey, I'm going to be doing surgery. I might not be reachable. I mean, it all seemed to make sense. It was frustrating, but it's the hazard of dating a super surgeon. So happy. I just cannot believe it that in three days I will see you again and book my flight. We knew we wanted to get married in Italy. We didn't have that much time. And he said to me, look, let me take over all the planning of the wedding. I was really hesitant to do that. I mean, no offense, but what man, what man knows how to plan a wedding? When Benita told me that Paolo was going to do everything, I'm like, well, damn, you deserve it. It's your time to be able to show up and enjoy the party. Paolo is Catholic. He was absolutely adamant that he wanted it to be a Catholic wedding. And I said, look, aside from the fact that I'm not Catholic, the Catholic Church is not going to marry two divorcees. Maybe we should ditch this whole Catholic wedding thing. No, no, I'm going to go talk to my contacts in Rome. Now, I knew he had supposedly done work at the Vatican. Then when he landed in Rome, I said, who are you meeting with? And he said, you're not going to believe me. And, and he said, I'm meeting with the Pope. He goes to this meeting, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting. And he finally calls me, and he's like, you need to sit down. And I'm like, what's going on? Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.